What a job you've done of keeping kill these 86-year-old church acting look like it's brand new. Thank you. Wow, we. I'll pay you whatever Ed Miller was paying you, double. Man, why don't I just sit down and we'll just go home? <laughs> this really is cool. Oh, and thank, thank you, Ed, for the air conditioning. Thank you. Oh, God bless him. If he did nothing else, God bless him. Uh, anybody here live near Woodridge Road? Well, oh, good for you. That's where I grew up, Edgewood. Where I was born on Edgewood Street and raised in, in uh, uh, re, re, uh, you know, the, the, despite the 86 years, this is the first time that I have had the privilege of delivering a homily in St. Bernadine Church. And, um, and I know very well that I'm standing on the shoulders, and you know this too, of countless marvelous giants that preceded me, and so now you know who you, whom you can blame. Uh, I'm especially proud that on the 85th anniversary last year, Monsignor Art Bastras spoke, and uh, he is one of my favorite people, one of my favorite priests, and uh, truly. And when I com comment on him to other priests, many of them will say, "Well." Art has something of a temper. Uh, and I said, well, you would have a temper too if you had his name. <laughs> I was baptized right back in that little alcove uh, before you wisely and beautifully put the, the uh, baptismal font up here uh, by Father Cummings, and that would have been July of 1937. And don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> At the eight o'clock mass, somebody over here whistled. I, Um, confirmed here by Cardinal Sheehan, and it wasn't though until I became an altar boy, and that just saying that altar boy tells you a lot about those things. But um, that that was my, when my relationship to the parish really got a jolt, uh, because I met all kinds of people, and I began to rub elbows with with names that will sound like to you like Caesar and Thomas Jefferson and so on. <laughs> But their names were like John Moran and Jim Fay and Jerry Huseman. And Jerry Huseman, I'm, he came to this parish when I was in the eighth grade, believe it or not. And he died just a few years ago. He was my mentor throughout my priesthood. And that's before they, they used that word mentor, you know, it just kept you out of trouble. And that, <laughs> um, but I think just as really, and that's why I feel like my roots are here. My mother and father, I got more faith stuff from them than I ever got uh, in religion classes. I didn't, don't, I didn't, don't tell the kids I said that. <laughs> but I, that's true. Uh, I got it from my mother and my father, and uh, I'm really proud of that. And <clears throat> In my younger days, uh, in the 50s and 60s, the grand poobah of this neighborhood, and some of you folks will remember, Monsignor Louis C. Vaith. Uh, he was known affectionately, I think, uh, I, I'm pretty sure, as Uncle Louis, or just plain Louis. Or there were another of other racy titles that he had, which I will spare you since we are in the sacred confines. <clears throat> But Louis was a child of his time. He was a good priest, but people loved him. The people really did. And he loved the people. But he was a nut. <laughs> and uh, um, he really was. Um, when I said my first mass here in 1963, Louis was in St. Agnes Hospital. And Father Jerry Huseman explained that he had been out fishing for souls and the outboard motor hit him in the back. That's funny, laugh, come on, come on. <clears throat> so anyway, that's how my 52 years of priesthood got a jump kick here at St. Bernadine. 
And it was interesting, in those days, St. Bernadine's was known for vocation, vocation, vocation. The priesthood and for this life, they came like they had them a cornucopia. And I am convinced that it was very much because the young people learned from the caliber and the style and the, just the, the class of the priests who were here. They were just great guys. And you know, you had to really like them and, and, and anybody could say, hey, you know, I think maybe this priesthood thing is a pretty good deal because look at these guys. And the sisters too. The convent was full of sisters. We had all kinds of young ladies going off. It was a marvelous experience. And, and the priests all had a reputation too. I remember Father Jim Fay, he was regarded as the one who was very, very devout, very, very holy. This was his confessional over here. I can yell louder than that, don't, that's don't worry. <laughs> This was his confessional, and he had a reputation for great holiness because he would sit in there uh, like a whole afternoon and read and whatnot, and Father Huseman said, he's not a bit holier than anybody else. He just can't stand living in the same house as Louis Vane. <laughs> Another great man was a fellow named Carol Satterfield. Carol was a genius. Uh, he studied in Rome, and so did I, but he learned a lot more than I did. But he had a way, he, he was just, he would, for example, you go to confession to him, he'd be all finished, and then he'd say, any questions? <laughs> but that was nice. You know, if it was something you wanted to shoot the breeze about, that was your chance. And that was nice for a, a, a guy who was such a scholar. And of course, he could run rings around Louis, the pastor. And the Louis thought he was a great, great theologian, so he'd pontificate about everything he knew. And when he was finished, Father Satterfield would pick up a, a tray of nuts and say, nuts, Monsignor. <laughs> it was a good house. It was a happy house. And I'll tell you, the parishioners knew it, and they were proud of that happy house. And the kids knew it, the kids knew it. Boys and girls, they, they just were all constantly, always running around the neighborhood and all around, up in the, the schoolyard and whatnot, and the priests were always able to make some time for them. And when you had a pastor, in those days, it was more romantic, and if you had a pastor who was a little crazy, it added a touch of class to your neighborhood. <laughs> Uncle Louis never read or gave a homily or gave a sermon. Louis would read the bulletin to you, <laughs> which was an, an enormous bore. And my family sit over there, and after the, he was finished, you know, everybody would stand up for the creed. And my father would announce in a voice that could be heard on Hilton Street, and he would say, Well, Marie, another one of those three for a dollar jobs. <laughs> and my mother would simply grit her teeth and say, Bernard, I can't raise both of you. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we don't want to wander all morning down memory lane. Because there's important stuff to do here before we, we go leave. Because right now, right here, right here on Edmondson Avenue, it's the celebration of the body of Christ. The mixed, multicolored body of Christ. We've got bigger fish to fry, don't we? Because when the spirit was ready, he or she sent along a priest named Ed, Monsignor Ed. Thank you again for the air conditioning. 
But he, uh, you know, the rest is history. It's your history. It's our history. If you don't mind my assuming we're all St. Bernadine's folks, it's our history. Uh, it's your story, our lives, our homes are here on the hill still. And Big Ed has made one bone deep imprint on every one of us who is St. Bede. Darn right, darn right. One of the things I liked about Ed was he was so deliciously irreverent. He used to refer to the higher-ups downtown as the suits. <laughs> my kind of man. Paul stopped down uh, my place and we chatted at some length uh, several weeks ago. And um, one of the ladies that I greeted at the door said the same thing. Ed has never left this place. He's still here. His presence is not gone from this place. And that's because of you guys. You haven't even diminished Ed's presence. And how do we know that? It's not from something pious, but because faith is a verb. And St. Bees has not even slowed down much less cheated on your worship or your ministry or your scrying or or any other, or witnessing or, or your visiting or your outreach you're still alive and well that sign says it so well <laughs> jesus always identified himself with the least why do you persecute me, remember Jesus yelled at St. Paul. And Paul said, well, who are you? Mm. He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. So each and every one of us is the Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. And that's not Catholic whipped cream. That's not Catholic confetti. That's the genuine article. You can take that to the bank. And that's what makes us different from all the other churches all around. We all say the same thing. We all preach the same gospel. But we believe when he says he's down, he identifies himself with something to eat and something to drink. He ain't kidding. Now, I know that Ed did not deliver that faith to you. You recognize that faith in him as the same thing that you got from your moms and dads when you were little. Right? Right. Your moms and dads brought you up on that. That's how it works. The body of Christ is us. We're all part of it. None of us is better than another, but by damn, we're all special. Two weeks ago, we partied big time that the Holy Spirit was the one who sent Ed, and he makes us special. That spirit of Jesus is what made him special, made us special. And did you know that the early church had a nickname for the Holy Spirit? The early church called him the Dynamo. No kidding. A dynamo spins around and generates energy, just like Ed did, didn't he? He generate energy, 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 energy. Wait a minute. <laughs> you can't get these up in Marshalls up there out of a paper box. <laughs> and I'll try again. Dynamos spin around, and don't you tell back at the there's some people from my parish here, and they're going to squeal on me as soon as they get back. <laughs> but dynamos create energy, and that's what Ed did all over the place. Who on earth was a faster dynamo than Ed Miller? Nobody, but nobody could dream up more ways to convince us to part with our money than Ed. <laughs> True, true, true. Back me up. You usually give me a chord when I say something good. (laughs) 
But Ed was not just a dynamo, he was a smart dynamo because he told us, go ahead, he was a smart dynamo. Ed gave us the reason, the purpose, the rationale, the goal, what he needed the money for. He never asked for money. He said, I got a project that the parish needs. I'm sending you out and you give us money and during it, we didn't do it. <laughs> it's always the same goal and the same goal was the same goal that Jesus had and it was the only goal that Jesus had, the only goal that Ed had and that was and is people. People. <laughs> Families of St. Bees. Now, you want to take a look at the future? Sure you do. 86 is, you're just piddling along as little kids. You haven't, you haven't hit the big times yet. You're, you've got a long way to go, you really do. So let's unwrap ever so quickly your new pastor, Rick Bozzelli, uh, a marvelous man. Uh, you'll find right off the bat that he's a new, slimmer, <laughs> Silent running, no nonsense sports model, Monsignor. Rich Bozzelli with two Z's and two L's. And I can tell you this about Rich you'll find an awful lot of Ed in Rich. <laughs> the only difference immediately noticeable will be the audio's turned down. So you may have to cup your ear to hear Rich, but you'll never be disappointed with what he's got to say. He's our kind of man. He's a Jesus man. He's a Francis, Pope Francis man. He's a gospel man. So with Rich leading you into the next few many, many years, you can be confident that Ed is going to send us uh, the dynamo, sending us calm seas and good winds, and St. Bees will reach out way beyond Bloomingdale and way beyond Ellicott City and way beyond Frederick Road and way beyond Lincoln Park. And you are going to reach out to that kaleidoscope of a colored church and say, come see our God. Take him with you. We share the God that we got. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <Ta -da! Yay! laughs>